and welcome everybody to day three of week three of the SPL. My name is LHS and I'm joined on the desk by Anatoly. How are you doing? Doing pretty well right now, Zach. Today is going to be North America. I'm really excited considering where these teams are right now in the standings. Definitely. It's week three. There's not a whole lot of time left for teams to qualify for DreamHack. We've got the top four EU teams the top three NA teams, and one South American team. And the way the North American teams are currently in the standings, there are four teams here that are tied at that seven-point marker, making it such a tight race here in week number three. We keep talking about how EU is a tight race, but NA is even tighter. They only have those three spots. That's true. And we'll take a look at the standings right here. We're going to go ahead and see Luminosity, Memory of Gabe, Monkey Manus, and Team Allegiance here, which surprised me specifically, all tied at the top you look at that squad and you look at you know formerly team eager team ai and these games all are going to have grave importance Let's look at the schedule for today we've got team ai versus team legion starting off our day going to e united noble followed by luminosity flashpoint and ending the day we're going to have monkey madness versus in memory of gabe all very interesting matchups indeed but the first one here we're looking at ai versus allegiance here and when i see this matchup the two players that stand out for me the most is definitely got to be the two junglers here El Chapo versus Weekend. El Chapo, the newest addition to Eager. Let, let's let's backtrack a little bit and talk about how Zatman left this team. You know, we got Xenotronics coming in and Chapo. And Chapo's kind of this feast or famine uh, of a jungler. You know, he can tilt off the face of the earth or he can carry your team. That's true. He has made a lot of confident plays. Some people will call it reckless. I call it confidence. He's the one that will be determining whether or not AI is going to ride or die today in their matchup against Allegiance. It'll be interesting to see how uh, AI can kind of contain the aggression from Chapo. I mean, they've been dealing with Zatman for a long time now, so they kind of know how to handle these aggressive players. Sure, I'm looking at the best end of Roar to be able to reel in Chapo if he ever goes off in that deep end. And then his opposition, the jungler, the weekend, you know, he's been playing very well this split so far, whether it's m the meta and his god pool just really meshing or him taking the next step at to becoming a better player. We've been seeing different phases of weekend throughout his SPL career. It seems that he went back a few phases the way he's been playing, just trying to cater towards Cyclone Spin in that soul lane. And whenever he's been making plays like that, he's been making the victories happen, except for that last week when they lost against E United. It'll be interesting to see how Weekin bounces back from the 2-0 loss to Noble. Uh, you mean they could come out and they can, you know, they can tilt off the face of the earth, or they can come out with a chip on their shoulder and really wreck in this game. That's true. And uh, heading into this first set, if I had to predict this matchup between AI and Allegiance, I think AI could potentially find an upset here despite such a short time playing for Xenotronics and Chapo. But Allegiance here, I'm looking at the way Weekin is going to be playing this matchup. If he's going to be playing this same way that he did last week there's not too much hope for the side of alg so that's why i'm gonna give this split a split the split a split yeah. i i don't know what to think i think that you know i this new team team ai they can find a 2-0 victory here or they could find a split it all really depends on how xenotronics and chapel kind of fit into this team and whether or not alg can really bounce back from their loss uh to noble now is the time to secure their spot to increase themselves heading into the standings here. But for the second set of the day, it's going to be that E United versus Noble matchup. And I'm looking at the supports. When Polar Mike first took over for Pain, it looked like a real plug and play situation. You mean Polar Bear Mike came in, did very well. But now we're seeing growing pains from that transition. It just seems to me that the way he's been able to plug and play in this support role has been outstanding. Normally, whenever a new player comes into a team for a plug and play situation, you're looking at the hunter role or the solo lane. So for him, PBMs, to be able to just join this team of EU United with such a seasoned veteran players and make the plays happen and be confident about the plays to happen shows how much respect he truly he gets he's never been the guy on a team before he's never been the leader but taking over for pain that's kind of his role right now he's stepping into being a leader he's growing as a player and what you can't say about pbm is he's not a smart player he's one of the smartest supports that's true the way he was kind of bred by shadow q one of these very tactical theory crafting support styles pbm to follow up as well but he's going to be against wubbin here in that matchup and wubbin is one of these guys that just loves to play alongside Wowie every single time always can be seen playing ranked together. 
he loves to try to make things happen for his team. He's always looking to make plays for his playmakers. But at the cost of that, he gets caught out of position sometimes. That's true. Sometimes it's not always good to be trying to look for the plays if you're too far out of position into the enemy back lines. And that's something that he received a lot of pain against his set in memory of Gabe, just always getting focused out. However, a nice little clean 2-0 victory against Allegiance early on could be the momentum that Wubbin and the rest of his team needs to find a set win here. It'll be interesting to see how these two uh, teams match up against each other. There's a lot of question marks on both sides. Noble can have these pop-off games where their players play out of their mind, but, you know, they also have a lower floor that kind of compensates for that a little bit. That's true. Noble has some extremely high ceilings, and I think that Noble could potentially look for a 2-0 here against E United. I'm giving this 2-0 in Noble's favor or a split. I don't see E United being able to take both games against Noble. It'll, it'll, deter it'll be determined by which Noble kind of shows up. I actually lean the other way. I think we're looking at a 2-0 for E United Ooh. or a split. Well, we got a split here on the desk, but for the third set of the day, we're going to be seeing Luminosity against Flashpoint and such an uh, iconic duel lane here between Barracuda and Jeff. A little less uh, question marks around in this game, but you look at Barra, you look at Jeff, you know, Barra is this calculated player. He knows where to be. He knows where he needs to go in the rotations, know what to do. He'll fight you in the face or he'll just farm. Both of these two players, the dual lane out of Luminosity here, are always making the place together, always communicating. Whenever we listen in to their comms during land setting or whenever they are streaming, you could just hear Jeff Hilla always calling out his buttons. No matter what happens, Barracuda knows that Jeff is going to be there to help or to save him. That's very true. They've been playing together for so long after the launch tournament. That's when this iconic dual lane started to group up and play together. And they're going to be against Sops and ShadowQ on the opposite end. And that's going to be a difficult time for Flashpoint against Jeff and Barra. It's a little bit of a different story on the other end. I mean, Sops is a younger guy. He He's had his consistent issues, but he's a young player, and he's made some plays. So it'll be interesting to see how he kind of finds his own way in this game. And then you've got Shadow Q, who's, you know, he's an OG. This is not necessarily a must win for Flashpoint because they're mathematically out of the contention for Valencia anyway. They have yet to find a whole victory here in the summer split. You can say that they're the North American Sanguine, but either way, this is more of a time for Sops, ShadowQ, and the rest of Flashpoint to truly find their identity and maybe make some plays happen for the fall split. This is definitely going to be a learning experience for this team. Also, they're not going to have Walrus in this game, mm. and he came in as a plug-and-play and drastically made this team better. They're going to be having Madman Mark. Madman Mark is not a name that we've heard of until Season 2, Season 1, when he was that hunter role player for Denial Esports back in the day. He has some time playing with Shadowkey before, so it makes sense as to why he's replacing Walrus for the time being. But to go from hunter role to the soul lane, that's a plug-and-play that's just relatively safe because you're just basically farming and chilling anyway. We, we've seen the opposite of that. We've seen Nika go from, you know, actually we've seen the exact same. We've seen Nika go from an ADC to solo and then back to the ADC. To jungle. To and jungle. To do whatever. He, he plays whatever he wants. Looking at this game, I got to look at Luminosity taking the 2-0 here. What do you think? Yeah, the safe, safe call here for your uh, fantasy points is going to be Luminosity winning 2-0. Clean. Very clean. They're not, it, does clean. Luminosity have like, any problems in this game though? I can't imagine that they would have any single problems unless Man Man Mark pulls out some interesting wild shenanigans in that solo lane that I'm not expecting. Can he be the new final K? Can he come in and just transform this team? I guess we'll find out later on today. So our next game to end the day is going to be Monkey Madness versus In Memory of Gabe. This is a game that's going to have big implications for who goes to Valencia. That's true. Both of these teams now tied at seven points each here. Monkey Madness here versus Memory of Gabe. But looking at the mid matchup here, you have Anister on one end and Heroin on the other. Going from jungle to mid for Anister, Anister specifically, has been a great transition so far in Season 4. We look at all these players that's made the changes between Matt Yankee, Baskin, and Anister. And I say like Anister is that second position right under Baskin that's been able to fit this role. He had those comfort picks early on where he was still feeling out the mid role. You know, he had his raw that he favored. But now he's really starting to become more comfortable in the role as a whole. He's picking these more meta picks. And he's really showing more comfortability on the mid role 
opposed to mid gods. It's just because he trusts his jungler so well. Homie Fa is another world-class elite jungler, and for Anister to step down from his original position and relinquish it to Homie Fa shows that Homie Fa is to be trusted, respected, and feared if you're ever going to be against him. Anister is just, he's a veteran's veteran. He has been to the top. He's been at every step along the way. He knows every in and out of this game. But Heroin, though, as well, he has a lot of experience under his belt. He was that six-man for Cloud9 back in Season 2. That six-man position is just nothing to take for granted here. He's been playing the mid role at a different kind of level compared to most others, going for some unconventional picks every now and then. He has his Giannis. You don't let Heroin get Giannis. Just like Nulissa, you don't let Nulissa get Giannis. He is a, amazing at this god, but he also has, you know, some other gods in that god pool. He likes to play the Toth, and every now and then he'll pull out the Kukulkin and trying to set up the plays with Sinoshort, his jungler. And with his new soul laner as well, Kiki So Cheeky, he's been making the necessary rotations to create that frontline presence to allow Heroin to get off the plays in the backline. It'll be interesting to see how these teams show up. You, we talked about how much trust there was with Andy and Homie FA, and now looking at Heroin and Sinosha, there's a lot of trust there as well, but is it going to match up the same way? Well, we're going to find out relatively soon here because this set should be a slobber knocker. Both of these teams tied at seven points. DreamHack Valencia stipulations for this set. I look at these teams, and they're very similar to me. You look at the start of the year, uh, Monkey Madness formerly Soar, you know, they started off a little rough. They couldn't really find their way, and then everything started to click. And they became, they went from a good team to a great team. And In Memory of Gabe has flirted with making that step, but they're still just a good team. They haven't been able to make that transition to a great team. So looking at this game, I think I favor Monkey Madness getting a 2-0 here. I would have to actually agree with you because the way I look at Monkey Madness and their players specifically is they get off to a slow start during new seasons, new splits, new metas, and as the season progresses, they just start to ramp up the victories, and I'm expecting no different here in their set against Memory of Gabe. What does In Memory of Gabe have to do to fight into this game and just overpower Monkey Madness? Shut down Homie FA. That's it. That's, that's, that's just the, the goal. You shut down Homie FA, you win the game because now Anitzer is going to get affected as well, and it's all going to be that trickle-down effect. All right. It'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out. That's it for us on the analyst desk. Let's go to the catchers for game number one. Hello? Hello. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Zach Dick. My name's Tom. That's going to be Taco. We've got, well, not eager anymore. We've got AI starting off the day today. And we've also got a couple of roster changes coming through for Team AI as well. As a lot of you at home might be aware of, it is going to be El Chapo and Xenotronics filling in the roles and taking up the mantle. I'm really excited about these changes. Xenotronics has been, me uh, let's say, let's say medium, medium, medium well, right? He's been <laughs> all right, but hasn't really, really uh, found himself at the top of the mountain. Whereas Chapo seemed to be working on all cylinders, had a couple of bad games, and then was inexplicably dropped from the Noble roster. I'm very happy that both of these guys have found their ways onto a team here. We'll get to pick the bands right away. North America coming at you right here on iOS TV. Got a lot to prove, I, I would say. And I, I think that the pressure is on a little bit. Uh, these guys on AI know that this is really kind of their redemption shot, especially for Chapo and Xenotronics. Yeah. But more so, the team as a whole just wants to prove that they know what they're doing when it comes to picking up a new roster. A lot of people don't really have a whole lot of faith. They're saying rip AI, rip old eager yeah. these guys are out there's no shot at valencia but I, I think that some people might be giving them a little bit too much flack and the, the possibilities are, are kind of endless here when it comes to this new draft i, I mean we'll see you're definitely going to feel the loss of zap man that's a really big deal but we've spoken a lot about ai team allegiance neil ma locks in the fafnir alg looked fantastic not last set the set before last <laughs> set they looked like they were a top tier team and then last set, they dropped two to Noble. So the pressure's on AI because they have a new roster, but the pressure's on ALG to prove which one was the fluke, the good week or the bad week. <laughs> I think that there's really just a lot of different kind of opportunities that both of these teams are looking for. And there is the classic nemesis lock-in selection for Allegiance. I think that quite a lot of people have been waiting a very long time yep. to see Neek Weekend finally break it out. And for good reason. We saw a number of different players play yesterday in Europe and just very strong character. One, not only does she counteract a lot of what the guard, what a lot of the tank meta that we see. Bracer kind of hurts her, but then she's going to use it as well. Uh, paired up with the 
Fafnir and Bologna. We're going to see a very high objective, uh, high objective clearing team, and ALG should have a lot of lockdown around those areas. I also really like the choice to select the Nemesis and go for the Bologna and Fafnir because they have a lot of frontline potential already between the Fafnir and the Bologna, which means that AI is going to have to be a little bit more careful with their draft, considering that the burst potential is already there for Allegiance. With Geb, Susano, and Ho Yi, very different side of things. You're talking about burst on the side of ALG. I would say burst, more lockdown for me with the Susano and the Ho Yi. I, I could see that, but I, I like the setup potential and the Scylla, I think, is an excellent complement to the Susano. There's perfect setup there, really easy combination to get going, and plus, it's it's the best on Scylla at yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the best is still the mid laner for Team AI. They're going to be able to really just follow him into wherever he wants to go, and we say it every time. One good ultimate out of Scylla can change a team fight and thus the game. Team Allegiance mid laner Agni. This is a character that we've seen on and off, and I think he offers a lot of control. I love this character. I, I think that it'll be a fair matchup as well because Agni and Scylla can both have a little bit of a questionable early game. Yep. Agni might have the slight advantage there, but paired alongside the Nemesis, this will be a fairly even matchup between the Susano and Scylla if they opt to start that way. Yeah, I don't think, I'm not sure. I'll say I'm not sure if we see Agni if Scylla is not selected there, but Agni will be the choice, and I think it'll bode well for ALG. I uh, I think this type of mid laner really works with what they want to do. Hercules, the final selection. That'll be Divios over there on Team AI. He loves his character. He's not going to die, so <laughs> we'll see how it works out. AI, formerly Eager, versus ALG. And I think that both of these teams have drafted fairly solid compositions, and they both seem to have gotten what they're looking for. I think that's the most important part. Xenotronics was formerly an ADC main, and he's been chilling on that for a while in comparison to when he swapped over to mid lane for a bit with his stand on luminosity and stuff. But I think that Hu Yi was actually one of the staple picks for him back yeah. when he was so accustomed to just maining ADC all the time. The best going to be able to get the first shot out here. We can have met Yankee joining up in the mid lane. Whereas Best's jungler is actually starting in the jungle and clearing out the speed buff. So that should Allegiance find some extra push. There's nothing to actually invade on. We can then met Yankee opt to just go and play it safe instead, though. A little bit different than what we've normally seen. A lot of hyper aggression early level one invades. I like the choice just because against the Bologna, you can never really go wrong with securing your own jungle. There's so many different opportunities. Cyclone Spin loves that early aggression anyway, so just helping clear with Divios, I think, is the best way to go. Yeah, we've seen a number of teams try this start where they start the jungle, and, and, and I like that a lot. You know, it's funny. I, I remember seeing some community posts like, why did the jungle actually start the jungle? And I mean, you, you totally can. In fact, it's a high level strategy. So the jungler starting in the jungle right there for team AI, making sure that they don't get invaded on. That's the smart, that's the meta answering the meta. The meta is always about invades. Well, now I'm gonna take my stuff so you there's nothing to invade. I mean, it was a similar response on the duo lane side. Xenotronics and Aurora just went to secure their own buffs pick up the purple and red, and it was the same thing from Oceans and Neil Ma. Yep. So uh, these sides were, uh, I think that Medusa and Fafnir definitely gets the early lane clear aggression, but it's evident that these guys aren't looking to try and duke this out super early on. <laughs> you say as Neil Ma <laughs> jumps on to Zeno. You know, I like that you brought up Zeno's Ho Yi because and that's how I feel about Ocean's Medusa. Um, when he sort of came on the scene, Medusa was not a prevalent character. Hunters were late game, either mage, either mage hunters or even Shibalanke we saw, and Ocean's said no i'm gonna play the mid game medusa and he wrecked and he had fantastic gameplay on this and he will play medusa i feel almost any opportunity you give him so this is the meta for ocean man yeah he really likes those mid-tier hunters i would say kind of like the on her and the yeah. medusa and i think that it's pretty incredible how you're able to adapt and kind of shift an entire draft around it to make it work every time and it, and it's it's honestly just fun to watch um <laughs> when it comes down to it oceans on the Medusa, he's not going to look for every fight in the wave, but he's going to run these team fights. He's going to run the counter, the the, uh, the counter rotations. When both hunters try to join the fight in the mid lane, he's going to catch you in the jungle and hit you with that ultimate. And so that's what you want to look for at Oceans: big rotations and then bigger team fights. Chapo, looking to make one of the first moves of the afternoon here. Just kind of, getting ready. <laughs> trying to capitalize on the Cyclone. I think Cyclone might be a little bit wary, kind of under the impression that he might be getting ganked fairly soon. But he is a Bologna. Bologna's are fairly tanky, so it'll be interesting to see how much damage Chapo is going to try and put out. I love this positioning from Chapo as well. Oh, he's going to... 
not spot out. Now you got spotted out right there just at the corner of the eye. But so Chapo's waiting for Cyclone Spin to walk up too far and give him the opportunity for the safe gank, right? But if it doesn't come, it's all good because Chapo is sitting in range of the minions to get golden experience. So he can wait as long as he wants because he's actually farming. A little bit of aggression from that Yankee, just zoning away on the Agni bombs. Wasn't even looking to try and help his team secure. Trusted that Weaken and Cyclone would be enough to drop those elementals. Yeah, that's all, that's exactly what allows him to go ahead and get that farm for the little elemental gremlins, the zoning ults by Mint Yankee, shoving Chapo out of the way. That's one of the good things that Agni brings that's similar to some of the traditional mages is area denial. If he's tossing out bombs there or just lays down the, uh, the noxious fumes, you, you know that you can't really walk over there because you're going to get stunned. I love the map awareness, though, by Aurora, recognizing that the buff timers were about to come off cooldown. Hold that thought. It could be Cyclone forced to expend his ultimate. Chapo doesn't have quite enough follow-up just yet, but forcing out the ultimate from Bologna just means that he'll probably be looking to rotate back over. Yeah, knowing that that ultimate is not available, you can chase down Bologna so much easier. Zeno has to protect his tower just a little bit. No aggression just yet. Aurora's going to get stunned, but easy shield saves him for the moment. And Met Yankee, quite outnumbered, plays it safe. And yeah, going back to what I was saying on Aurora's rotation there, he recognized that the buff timers were coming up and that his team wanted to try and secure their own jungle, knowing that there were three members of of Allegiance hovering around that section. I, I love that he just rotated over to ensure that they could secure those buffs. Exactly. The, the buffs were the number one priority early on, but right now, Gold Fury is a priority for Allegiance. In comes Aurora looking for a cheeky steal, gets the stun. Can he find the steal? Absolutely not. Allegiance takes down the Gold Fury. Aurora trades his life. First blood on top of it. ALG easily leading by 2,000. Kind of unfortunate that Allegiance just managed to catch AI unexpectedly, I, and no one was even in position to try and back up Aurora from his ultimate in the follow-up. Yeah, Aurora, and that, you know, that's, oh, man. That, that, that makes me think. I like the play by him. So I always like that play, but the <laughs> fact that he was first blood and adds 500 gold on top of that, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it could be a lot worse. Personally, they could have all wiped. Uh, Chapo trying to respond now to make up for it, but Weekend's going to be able to dash away, and the speed buff is more than enough to get him out of the danger zone. So Chapo is a player that um, we see, we've see we seen a lot of if you followed Smite for a long time. He showed up in the PC League this year and is a, a very, very famous player in the console side of things. And He's known for hyper-aggression and for being one of these junglers that can just run a game. We're not seeing that just yet. Only six minutes in, but he has Susano. I kind of wanted to see this. I, I want to see Susano kind of develop, but it can also be really difficult for a Susano to get in there. I mean, AOG have an excellent front line. They've got the Fafnir, they've got the Bologna, and a Nemesis is great at helping yeah. slow down some of that Susano mobility. Cyclone's been in some trouble. Below half, Weekend's going to respond as Aurora's here as well. Nino Ma in the wings won't reach there in time. Aurora's going to deal with two players, however. And they'll be able to chase out his ultimate, but that's about it. Win for Allegiance in the jungle. Um, I, I don't think that it's poor positioning by Aurora by any means either. No, Allegiance just seems like they're trying to swarm him early on because this is probably the most vulnerable time period for a Geb. He doesn't really have too many protections online. He's starting to make his way into what I'm sure will be a gauntlet of Thebes, but right now with just Traveler's Shoes and a Watcher's Gift, that's, that's not near enough right. tankiness to deal with the Nemesis ult quite yet. Uh-oh, Xenotronics getting collapsed on left, right, and center. He's got to give this red buff up, but he doesn't seem to want to. Instead, just poking out Weaken. And the confidence that Xeno shows taking that fight allowed Allegiance to know that there was a rotation. Look at that. There's no blue wards over that area. It was just the fact that Xeno's fighting us. He's got to be fighting us for a reason. Let's leave. And you saw the four-man rotation coming in. Gotta appreciate, <laughs> gotta appreciate that uh, counter aggression by Xena because, I mean, Allegiance could have looked to just try and yeah. all in him really quick and then get out, but I, I think that that yeah. was the safer play to make. I think they get collapsed on too quickly there, and, and like I said, that's the the information of no information. If somebody's just gonna stand there and box you one v three, you just know you're getting ganked. <laughs> something's up, like something is up. So Allegiance really played intelligently there and get the hell out of dodge. Little Chapo here. Right side, still wants to gank this Bologna. Hasn't had the opportunity. And just walks to the lane for the farm. Keep an eye on Weekend in the back line coming in here. Not gonna toss the ultimate. Oh. Divios misses the kick. And Cyclone Spin 
Oh, man. Still got the ultimate, though. He might have missed he missed the one, but he still got the ultimate from Cyclone, and, and that's still a, a win for AI. Yeah, and that, what's interesting there is that was just Cyclone reacting off of the sound of the kick, expecting to, like, dodge it. He didn't even need to dodge it. It was just off the mark. <laughs> but nice reaction, I guess, from Cyclone Spin. Unfortunately for him, not on the winning side of things. That cooldown a little bit longer than uh, Driving Strike. And Divio's expending the ultimate. Always a fun decision whenever the Hercules decides to ult the waves. That's just purely just to acquire the lane pressure back, give him an opportunity to choose to back off if he wants to. It looks like he's hovering around in the lane, but at the very least, he won't have to worry about Cyclone just looking for that extra poke on him in the wave. Now Yankee down to below half at the moment. And I, I, I love Neil Ma's positioning here. Just hidden. he's going to go back to base, right? But... If Met Yankee got jumped on, you know that Fafnir is coming over the wall. Very careful positioning coming out from the guys on Allegiance. Somebody always seems to be ready and waiting to help their teammate. I think that this is more in favor of AI, though, for them to have the pacing of the game slow down this much. Their composition is definitely a little bit more late game oriented, especially having the Scylla and the Geb. So I think that Allegiance might be looking to try and amp up the pressure here pretty soon because they're, I'm certain that they're aware of the fact of just how well this draft from AI is going to prosper in the mid to late stage. I mean, the Agni doesn't follow Scylla into the late game as well as some of the other mages, but weaken on the Nemesis is just gonna get scarier and scarier and scarier. One of the most item-dependent characters in the jungle, in my opinion. And then Neil Ma on the Fafnir as well, one of the late-game behemoths. A Fafnir can do just as much damage as a solo laner when the game gets really late. So I, I think that AI does have a, an advantage come the late game, Taco, but I don't think it's 90-10. I think it is a little bit closer, but you're right. AI does wanna, or, or Allegiance does wanna make some plays earlier on, I, I agree. Gold Fury has respawned, and I think that's why we see this grouping yep. from Allegiance. They're really looking to see if they can sneak another one away from AI, but this time they're actually going to be prepared and look to prevent this from going down. Yeah, there's no sneak this time around. Allegiance still might go for it, in all honesty. I think they are confident in their team fight. Divios and Best are here as well, however. And notice that Cyclone Spin did not make the rotation. That might have been part of the plan. Just goad everybody over to the left-hand side, allow Cyclone to have this lead and steal the buffs. But guess what? AI were a step <laughs> ahead and took the buffs before they made the rotation. But now it's going to be Allegiance pulling back onto that Gold Fury. A little bit of deja vu for Aurora. He's the only one around. The rest of his team has just started moving towards it. Gold Fury is already close to being dropped. It goes ahead and gets reset. However, Allegiance is in trouble. Big ultimate from Aurora. Neil Ma transforms. There's Divios with the driving strike. Ocean Dancer is back. Takes down the support. Both supports down. Best just a little bit off the mark with that crush, but Allegiance are still poked out enough to slightly deter them from this Cyclone. Trying to tank up that Gold Fury. He's taking quite a lot of poke Look for this, at though. Weekend. Look at Weekend. Divios and the Best are in great spots, and Allegiance are letting them, because they have the flank, coming out from the jungle nemesis. Oof. Ultimate coming out from Divios. There's the knockback. Divios gets the kill, but Met Yankee martyred him. Hits him with the passive. But Best isn't done quite yet. He just ran away, but Chapo is making his way back towards the fight. Weekend is by himself for the most part, but Chapel's gonna be forced to back off because of Cyclone. But this is looking like a goal for you for AI. Possibly. Look at the pass. Look at the look at the patience. Excuse me, coming out from the best. Still has the ultimate. He still has the ultimate. There was no guaranteed kill with the ultimate, and he'd rather save it for the secure on the objective. Cyclone spin close to death. There's the ultimate. That's a guaranteed kill. He finds it, but he can't. Oof. <laughs> Can't, can't get quite close enough to make that come into play. He still has the crush, though, for this objective yeah. secure should they look for it. But now with all of Allegiance starting to come back in full health, AI are going to have to bait this one out slowly yet again. I, I still really like the decision from the best to only use that ultimate when somebody was absolutely going to die. Cyclone Spin just does a better job of getting out of there. I don't think that he was expecting Cyclone to take as much yeah. damage as he did. Otherwise, we would have seen that ultimate coming out from him a lot sooner. Exactly. I think everybody got surprised <laughs> by the amount of damage that Cyclone went ahead and took. Met Yankee clearing out his tower here. So a lot of a lot of action on the left side of the map. Gold Fury doesn't go to anybody, however. Allegiance still have the one from earlier on and a kill above Team AI's two. And because of that, they still have a grip on the lead, about 2,000 or just shy of it. 
AI are trying to be as cognizant of the map as possible, though, because it is Allegiance who have the ward control over the Gold Fury right now. Aurora was trying to get a little bit of vision onto there, but kind of just poked out of it by Neil Ma. So I, I like the aggression that Neil Ma is taking in order to defend their vision on the Gold Fury. These are two very similar uh, support players in my mind. Neil Ma and Aurora are very, very aggressive, but not in the road shot show i'm gonna play aries and kill you way they're aggressive in the way they position themselves and they position their teams and the calls that they make i feel are, are very are very powerful for both sides and you know i want to tip my hat to ai that exchange that we saw not letting allegiance get the gold fury and not trading out everyone in the process that was a big boy play that was impressive. Bit of a break as well from Aurora, not getting stunned out by that Yankee. Chapo are going to force him to dash away, though, in the mid lane. <laughs> Just kind of poking at each other. That's Neil Ma. <laughs> Nobody's here. Still going to hit you with the hammer. Because I can. <laughs> That's my job. Shouts to Neil Ma. Very happy that this guy's finally in the pro scene. He's been, or, or in the SPL, he's been around the high-level player pro scene for... What, four years now? He's always just that guy that's like, hey, we need to support. Neil yeah. Ma, what are you doing this weekend? That's, that's basically been Neil Ma's experience with the Challengers. And Aurora, however, he's having an entirely different experience, completely burst down from that Nemesis ultimate and met Yankee, and now it's the rest of AI trying to follow up. Oh, Neil Ma, he gets pulled back in. I don't think that's the plan you want to go for. Team AI, they lose their support. Chapo's got to go back to base as well. Divios makes the rotation, but Allegiance turns their sights onto the Gold Fury. Divios is here, does have the ultimate available. That's a good steal tool. And look at this, Cyclone Spin just zoning out two players. Gold Fury stuck on Oceans. And poor Divios, man. He, he has, like, not enough follow-up from his team just yet. Best trying to work on over and help him out. Allegiance do drop the Gold Fury, though, trying to lock down this kill on Divios. But look at that burst heal. Yeah, fantastic use of the mitigate. Wounds! Wicked is gone. That's a bigger wound. Nice shot coming out from Big D right there. Over traffic. Throws the ball right on top of the jungler and earns his team kill number three. And now it's Allegiance who needs to be on the run here. They're going to try and focus down Cyclone Span. Oh, He's trapped. Him. There's nowhere to go. Uses the Bracer to heal back up a large amount, but just not enough feel from his team. Cyclone is going to fall to the way of Xenotronics. You know, we used to call an Aegis use at that moment the Zapman Aegis. <laughs> Listen, I know Zapman took a break. That's, that's the Zapman Bracer. Okay, when you use the relic to no avail and you die a second later. That was a massive burst of heal though. That was, that was, that was pretty, pretty nuts. I, I think that they might have been able to turn it. Just everybody from Allegiance wasn't expecting him to survive as long as he did. So yeah. they'd already tried to escape. I love the itemization coming out from, from Team AI Soul and Tibios real quick. So he picks up the Wrath very early on in order to help uh, confirm his, uh, his stuff. And then you see he goes into an Aegis later on. It's irrelevant what the relics are. My point is he doesn't have teleport and he has swift, swift wing. wing. This has been <laughs> a strategy that I've been asking for since the item came out. It's decent. It's HP five, like, okay, sure. But if you kill the wave and you go back to base and run back to the lane, you're there before the wave. You're zooming. You're, you really are insanely fast with that yeah. swift wing. And I, a couple of solo laners have been flirting around with the notion of it. No one's really brought it to the competitive level quite yet. But I, I agree with you. I am very happy to see this item being utilized in the way that Divios is. It's a confidence play. Because here's the deal. Teleport allows you to cover up your mistake. When you get pushed out of lane because you took the wrong fight. When you get over aggressive and you get ganked on. You back to base whenever you want. With the wave coming towards your tower, you TP four seconds later, you're there, you kill the wave. By going swift wing, you don't have that luxury. So you're just ensuring that you're never going to get poked out to that point, And you're only going to go back to base on your terms. Divio so far, 3-1-1. I think he's going back to base on his terms. And Divius has been a, a massive reckoning force, too, for AI. I mean, the fact that he was able to zone four people and make them hesitate on whether or not they should try and commit to that Gold Fury just shows that he is a fairly decent threat. And right now, it's Cyclone. Not too concerned at all about Chapo being present alongside of Divios. Nah, Cyclone relatively tanky already with just the Mystical Mail. He, and the Bracer, of course. You noted the giant burst heal on the Warriors. It's big. They're That's trying to commit kill. this time. Oh, maybe not. No, the rest of... You see the ward? <laughs> that, <laughs> that ward right there? Yeah, there you go. The backside. Zeno walked right over it, and that was the call. If Zeno doesn't make that flank, you're right. ALG do stick to it, Taco. I think you're correct. 
And now I, I think that we're about to see another Gold Fury dance occur. It, this has really just come down to who gets poked out first and comes back in time. It's been fun, though. It's been tactical. A lot of times these are really sloppy engagements. These have been really, really fun to watch. Divio's in trouble here. Rally over there. Cyclone jumps on the left-hand side. Frenzy's popped on the right side. Divio's is one tick away from death, but he'll make it out and save under the tower. I'm a monster from Beth does not claim a life. Divio's tosses the boulder, and that's just a last-ditch effort. Ooh. Kick to Daniil Ma doesn't get pushed under the tower, but still a ton of damage on Allegiance's support. All the while, ALG punishing the Gold Tree. Who's going to take it? Still alive? Gold Tree goes to ALG. And Met Yankee just barely able to clean that one up as Cyclone picks off the best, but Xenotronics makes quick work of him. And now it's Ocean's just trying to run him down on the backside. But instead, Chapo's dying oh on the front from Met Yankee as he knocks out a roar as well. Everybody is low in this engagement. This is one of those nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> ALG take the win because of the objective, but that team fight, messy in both ways. Not messy in the sense that the players are playing sloppily, just everybody gets hurt. Look at oh, Weekend. No. Look at Weekend. Weekend feels too. Can he get them though is a different question. He's by himself trying to chase Hercules. Yeah, that's a smart play, buddy. <laughs> but they are still able to claim the T1 tower. So with the Gold Fury plus the T1 gold intact, Allegiance and, is, the, portal and the Portal Demon, they, they just siege three pretty big objectives for the 20 minute mark. And I think that they're, this is the first real lead that Allegiance has been able to establish all game. I'm going to point to something that I think is the key here. And as small as it is, as it is I seriously think it's the key factor for Allegiance in those two and get that extended engagement. Devo gloves on Oceans. If Oceans doesn't have Devo gloves, he can't take the Gold Fury for as long as he did. He has to go back to base in between those engagements. They can't go for the portal demon. That, the objectives, the team fight, different story. Those two objectives brought to you by Devo Gloves. There, there is a risk and a reward sanction when it comes to building the Devourer's Gauntlets on an ADC. And that was the risky part, is just building it in general. Yeah. Because going into lane, you have to constantly be under fire, pretty much. And now it's actually going to be Divios, who's coming under fire of the oh, rest of Allegiance. Just four -man cleaned group. up. Ouch. All four members early on. I say early on. It's 20 minutes in. Why does this game feel so much earlier, Taco? It's because of how long they started playing it out. They played it out really slow at the start, but Allegiance are kicking it up a notch. The dash out of Aurora's Cataclysm saves the life of a, a young player on Allegiance. Nice play. Aurora just winds up cataclysming nobody. Ouch. That's, that's always Matt Yankee just got out of there. really unfortunate for AI as they're just starting to lose objectives left and right. Now this, in the center. This is the allegiance that we saw. Not last set, but the set before that. Objective-minded, clear calls for, for what they want to do. Last week against Noble, Noble got the better of them. And they looked kind of lost. Here, there's a clear game plan. Cyclone Spin jumps on in. Tier 2 Tower's already gone in the mid lane. There's going to be Neil Ma transforming and jumping backwards. ALG just wanted the Tier 2. I I think that Allegiance are recognizing the fact that AI, if, if this game keeps delaying, then they'll be able to fight more into the aggression that Allegiance has been placing. But if they just amp things up with that little bit of gold and experience that they're able to acquire from sieging the Gold Fury, T1, and the Portal Demon, it's incredibly difficult for AI to buy themselves enough time so that they can actually have the, the damage necessary to counter-engage. It's, in it's interesting that you talk about damage, right? Yankee sitting on top of the player damage. He has he has been there. There were three players that transitioned into the mid lane in North America, and he was kind of number three. You had Andy and Baskin, and Met Yankee wasn't doing it like the other players. But recently, on his, I want to say utility picks, the Agnes, the Isises, changes. I don't want to say utility picks because he winds up top damage with them. I, I would have to agree with that. I think that he's done an excellent job as well as in spanning his god pole, but Aurora is again going to be aggressed on just completely disappeared. That's the beauty of Allegiance. Out of nowhere, they come in just fantastic. There's no setup. There's no... It's a surprise factor. They use that opportunity. Nice crush by Best, but it's just not going to be enough. There's the frenzy. Allegiance want to keep going. Cyclone spin and weaken. The longtime teammates both get a kill. Divio's kicks out. Met Yankee picks him up afterwards. 
four players down. The best, the only one alive. This Firebird is going down. This Phoenix has no chance. And this is a completely exposed Fire Giant as well. All Legions have to do is just group up and make their way on over to the, the big man. And I, I don't see any contest coming out from AI. I, I'm not sure that even Best would want to poke his head into there trying to secure it with his ultimate. Nah, no, no way. Ah, eh, maybe. No way. No, he can't even get close. Cyclone's already on zone duty. I would have, like, if Cyclone Spin wasn't in AI's base, I would have said maybe <laughs> we'll see Best show up, but Cyclone Spin is literally pushing Aurora into the Phoenix. So uh, that's the Cyclone Spin that we have come to know and love. And I think that this Allegiance team, I, I mentioned it on the desk the other day. Okay, Cyclone Spin. I mentioned it on the desk the other day that Allegiance have been a long project team. Going back when they had uh, Maddie and Lazes, and then they slowly added different players. They're getting closer to that team that I think we could envision way back when. I think that when it was originally Maddie Lass and Incon, that was mostly like the the streamer dream team. Yeah, that it was, was a stream team dream fun. team. Yep. It was it was morely, mostly just a for fun thing, but once it started getting more of a competitive aspect. Listen, we we get to business, man. Right. ALG was a newer organization, and Weekend said, look, I want to be, Weekend's a leader. I want to be the guy. I want to make my own team. So he teams up with ALG and goes, yo, we'll get the stream team, dream team together, and then we'll work towards finding a more successful unit. And because you got to have a footprint, right? And so he takes that footprint and then slowly entices people to join the squad. Taco, I think Allegiance can contend. I, th I think Allegiance can contend as well. I mean, this gameplay that we've seen for them has been very strong for today. And I, I don't think that this was really any hard mistake from AI. It was one missed team fight where Allegiance were able to secure the goal fury and then just capitalize off of the momentum from that. And now it's going to be Allegiance trying to close out game number one against AI. Ocean's big ultimate coming through. He already kings up a roar. And there's going to be Neil Ma going right into the dragon form. Left side Phoenix already took. Hosted 13 kills for Allegiance. Think that 14 as Ocean Man finds his fifth of the contest. Three people playing defense for Team AI. One very low, and he'll have to find his way back into the base. The Titan not taking much damage just yet, but there's still a Phoenix. Looking to clean up that last and final Phoenix, make this Titan as vulnerable as possible. And really, with Divio's out for 30 seconds, I don't see the front line. And Best missing the ultimate. Eesh. That is so unfortunate. Cyclone Spin picks up Chapo. Third Phoenix down for the count. And uh, here comes the Titan Onslaught Taco. This one looks like the writing's on the wall. Team AI playing some decent defense, but ALG just going for it. ALG are just too far ahead, I think, and they can able, they're can able they able to just fully That's commit that. out to that. You've got Met Yankee with the bombs, plenty of range and damage, and Gamer 1 is going to go the way of Allegiance. Yeah, I, I kind of what, kind of what I, and as well as a bunch of other people, kind of expected. Uh, these guys look really strong, and like I said, this was the question. Which one was the fluke? Was it the strong up? Was it the strong performance that we saw two sets ago? Or was it the loss to Noble? And after seeing game <laughs> one, uh, I think the loss to Noble was the fluke. ALG seemed like the real deal. I, I think that ALG are a very formidable team to go against, which is why this is such a great test for AI and their new roster and why they're really looking to try and prove themselves. And Met Yankee, I think, was really the staple for this game number one. Yeah, again, the, the expansion of the God Pool certainly really helping out Met Yankee right there getting the martyrdom kill, one of my favorites. But what it comes down to is that, look, man, the... Select the god selection of smite is so open and what is currently quote-unquote meta is not always what has to be selected agni has some achilles heels but you can certainly do that and he did a ton of damage i mean he was leading his team in the yeah. damage charts and i know a lot of people have been questioning how met yankees mid laning experience is starting to shape out and really it's it's evident he's made those steps necessary to try and improve himself not only as a player but just as a mid laner in general mm -hmm. and his, his gameplay i think has improved significantly since when he first made the transition absolutely yeah it's definitely an, it's definitely a, a, a journey right and some players pick it up quicker than others but here he is now and at the end of the day I'm results driven. And if that's the results, oh well. It took you a whole summer a whole spring split. Thank you for dialing <laughs> up during the summer split. Game